als unser Chief Marketing Officer und Senior Vice President Chris Bradshaw.
A man was on stage with a 3D printer and he was printing a human kidney. A kidney, the organ in your body. He had already printed a bladder and placed it into a human. The kidney was built with the stem cells from the person for whom it was going into, so there'd be no organ rejection. So, molecular biology and design are another form of 3D printing. This is very, very experimental at this point, but I do believe in my lifetime we will see 3D printed organs that go into uh, people. We are, we're already seeing it in experimentation. Okay, so that's digital fabrication. Now, the second trend is something we call ambient intelligence. Think of this as sensors. So this small sensor on the screen here is smaller than the tip of my finger. Okay? And people can take these sensors and, for example, put them into paint. And then you paint the wall. And the sensors are all in the paint. The sensors talk to one another. They communicate back to uh, a computer. And what can they tell the people who are operating the building? They can tell if the building has a crack in the wall because the sensors can sense it. They can sense if there's CO2 in the room. So people are putting sensors into all kinds of places now. Um, perhaps this one is familiar to some of you. Nike, with their Nike Plus line, puts a sensor in the sole of the shoe. And this sensor has a pedometer and an accelerometer and so it can tell the wearer how far they're running, how fast. It also tells Nike about that runner and can make suggestions about the next shoe that that person should get to have a better fit for what they do. So Nike is able to move past just providing a shoe and now they can provide a shoe with a service and more information for the runner. This is available today. This is not future. This is right now. You can buy this shoe with all of this capability. Okay, the third trend, infinite computing. So this is this idea that computing power is getting more and more available to us. So this is, computing power has always been a precious commodity, right? We value, we pay a lot of money for computers. It's a valuable commodity. We're always trying to make the computer go faster, perform better. Well, what's been happening is this compute power is now in a place where your smartphone, an iPhone, or a Android phone, has more compute power than the space shuttle had when it went into space. So your iPhone has more compute power than the space shuttle which the United States just retired. Think about that. It's incredible. That little tiny device. <coughs> Tremendous compute power. And so what's been happening essentially is that compute power is coming down, 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 down in price. So what are the implications? So it's going close to zero now. Well, one of the implications to consider is this here. If you have a task that takes one computer 10,000 seconds, so say rendering a building or rendering a machine or analyzing or simulating, one computer will take 10,000 seconds. It's about three hours. Cost about a dollar or a euro. But now with the cloud, I can use 10,000 computers and do the same thing in one second for the same price, one euro. Why? Because I can rent the cloud. I can use the computers in the cloud, even though I don't own them, because I now have the ability to essentially buy the compute power in the cloud. Autodesk can buy it for you. You can buy it directly yourself. So this opens the door to doing things that weren't possible or practical before. 
Now you can run simulation and analysis and renderings that maybe you would like get to or might not, but now you can do in the cloud very quickly. Okay, so to reflect, we've got a lot of compute power and it's ubiquitous. Ubiquitous means it's everywhere. It can be now anywhere because we have these mobile devices. We have Androids and iPhones and iPads. We certainly have laptops as well, but we now can take that compute power anywhere we need to go. And for the most part, in most places, we can stay connected to the cloud and continue to leverage that compute power. So this combination of infinite computing with ubiquity or everywhere allows us to think a little differently about how we design things. We can now combine the cloud with the crowd, meaning I can include more people than I've ever included before in how I think about design. I can think about my customers, my customers' customers. I can include field engineers. I can include site managers. I can include many people. Still with controls, still with security, still with all that stuff. But I can now leverage my design process all around. Okay, so these are the key trends. Now I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about how Autodesk is bringing tools to you that allow you to leverage these trends. So let's talk about tools for a second. Autodesk is a tools provider. What do we mean by tools? So man has been using tools for ages and ages, since the beginning of mankind. This is the first tool ever used, right? Stone axe, used by early man. Here are the, the caliper on the left side. You see the caliper? Very simple device. Without the caliper, the Cathedral Notre Dame could not have been built, right? But it was built because the master builders of the 1200s had the caliper. This is a slide rule. Anybody in here ever use one of these? Oh, there's a one hand, you're showing your age if you do. <laughs> For those of you who've never seen one before, this is an early calculator. Uh, this was invented about 350 years ago, in the 1600s. Without it, Neil Armstrong would not have walked on the moon. Okay? The NASA scientists used slide rules um, to make those computations. So 350 years later, after this was invented, people still using the slide ruler. Unfortunately, not so much today. It's a little bit of a dying art. Okay, so those are tools. So what about Autodesk tools? So we make tools that make things that weren't possible before possible. So you see the building, the very tall one in the center of this picture? This is Shanghai. This is the Shanghai Tower. It's not built yet, it's under construction. It's the one with the twist. So you look at this building and you say, wow, it's visually beautiful. It's aesthetically interesting. But this building, more than just being beautiful looking, was built to perform. This building has the twist, not to look good, but because it minimizes wind shear. And because of that 57 degree twist, they were able to minimize the amount of steel and concrete necessary to support the structure. Reducing cost and reducing uh, the eco footprint. This building is also coated in photovolt photovoltaics, so it generates its own energy. It has wind turbines at the top that cool. It has lighting, ambient lighting, so it doesn't need a lot of lights inside, etc. It's built to perform. Gensler, the architects who designed this building, all the engineering work, all done with Autodesk technology. And as I said, under construction currently in Shanghai. So these, these are our tools. These are our flagship tools, I think, probably. Um, you recognize at least one of these if you're in this room. Revit, Inventor, 3ds Max, Maya, AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT. And 
two years ago, we began to put these tools together in suites. So we now have design and creation suites that combine not only the flagship products, but also now include many other technology. Put together into industry-oriented uh, packages. Last year, we brought our first big cloud offering, Autodesk 360. This is the cornerstone of our cloud offerings going forward. If you're a subscriber, you have access to Autodesk 360 under your subscription agreement. Um, and today, it's largely a place where we're doing file sharing, rendering services, um, viewing, markup, those kinds of things. But there will be many, many more services added into Autodesk 360 as you go forward. And so the entire Autodesk portfolio is very deep and very rich. What I want to share with you next are some of the newer members of this portfolio and to highlight a couple of key tools uh, in here. So as I mentioned, iPads, iPhones, smartphones, Androids, whatever you want to call, whatever your preference is, are now everywhere. And so Autodesk is putting more and more of our technology onto those platforms. This was our first iPhone application, Sketchbook Mobile. We launched two and a half years ago. It's a 2D, simple sketching, conceptual product. Now more than 10 million people using Sketchbook. Runs on iPad, iPhone, Android, PC, and Mac. Okay? If you like 3D, we have something called 1, 2, 3D Sculpt. Again, for conceptual work, it's like play. Very popular with children, actually. Uh, but also used by professionals who, are in, who like to work in 3D, so this is a full 3D product, runs on iPad or Android devices, I iOS. Force Effect, I wish I had this in college. Right, for every engineer out there who had to do load calculations as a part of your mechanical homework, this is now the answer key. Okay, this thing computes forces um, statically, and then there's also a motion version, runs on iOS, um, iPad. Very cool app. Same technology that we use in Autodesk 360, uh, Simulation 360, excuse me. It's the same technology. Inventor Fusion, full 3D modeling, absolutely built to help people understand how things will perform once they're built. So you take your 3D model, put it in Inventor Fusion, and you start to understand performance. 1, 2, 3D Catch, probably my favorite of all. This thing is unbelievable. With a simple smartphone, you can take pictures of any object, a person, this building, this stage, it doesn't matter. Load them up to the cloud, stitch them together, and it brings you back a 3D model. So you can see a person's head here, a shoe. That 3D model can then be printed directly in a 3D printer. It can also go into uh, well, just about anything that will handle 3D. Okay, so uh, including one, two, 3D design, but you can also uh, use it to capture the buildings. So this is a robot with a camera that's flying over the headquarters of Autodesk in San Rafael, taking pictures of the building, and we captured the entire building with catch and made a 3D model and brought it into Reddit. So no LiDAR scanning involved here, just simple photos. You can do this in the bar with your friends. Take a picture on your iPhone or all the way around your head, load it up to 123D, and they'll have a 3D model before you're done with your beer. AutoCAD WS. This is one of the older um, offerings. More than 10, there are more users of AutoCAD WS than there are AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. So more than 10 million AutoCAD WS runs again on iOS and Android. This allows people to take their drawings into the field, mark them up, annotate them, be in constant contact with everyone else in the design uh, project. Um, great, this has a, uh, been a very successful product, only out about two years also, 10 million users. Last one, Autodesk PLM 360, pure cloud. Runs in the cloud, connects to all the devices we're talking about before. Um, doesn't require any back office uh, install. It's like Salesforce.com. So same kind of model, 
where everything's in the cloud. Um, this is very new. This is we've just rolled this out uh, this year. Lots and lots of wonderful feedback here. So what I've shown you is just a taste of some of the newer tools. What I want you to take away from this part is we completely embrace this notion of ubiquitous mobile computing connected to the cloud. We think that we can help you navigate in this environment of volatility by leveraging these tools and thinking about your jobs, what, what you do every day a little differently. And this is my challenge for you today at uh, Autodesk University. Think about what you're doing right now and think about what you could be doing in the future. If you have unlimited computing power, you have mobile connectivity, you have the ability to do things like simulation and analysis, unlike you've ever done before. So instead of just iterating, you can have the computer helping you figure out what is the optimal angle at which to spin the building so there's no wind shear. And here today at Autodesk University, you're surrounded by experts who understand many of the things that I've talked about. I suspect many of you in the audience are more expert than even some of our experts on these technologies. I encourage you to learn. AU is about learning. It's about making connections. It's about really trying to say to yourself, when I go back to the office tomorrow, what am I going to do different? And what did I learn? Take advantage of all that's here for you. And I thank you very much for your time this morning.